first what we're going to do is we're going to actually make the bass sound if I just solo the bass line on its own as you can see it's made with Ableton's inbuilt operator so I'm going to insert a new MIDI channel just below here and insert a new MIDI clip I'm going to write this bass line over four bars instead of over 16 I'm going to make sure it's four bars long and I'm going to make sure there's a lot of variation within the bass line with this style of minimal house we want to make sure that the bass line's always got a lot of variation it's really groovy so I'll just get Ableton's operator and drag it onto the channel and what I'm going to use is I'm just going to use one oscillator down here and I'm going to use a square wave if I just play that sound now go down a few octaves Okay, so I'm looking for just the sub in that. To bring out just the sub and get rid of all them harsh mid and high frequencies, I'm going to dial down the inbuilt EQ in operator over here. So as you can see, this is a low pass filter selected. And I'll just dial it back. And it usually works around, around 100 hertz, maybe just over 100 hertz, depending on how much mid and high frequency you want in it. But as you can hear, we start getting that really nice subby sound now. So I'll dial up the envelope on the front of this filter. And that gives me that nice, punchy, donkey sound on the front of it. it. It raises up the transient on the front, so it punches through the mix a lot better. As you can hear on the original bass, it's subby, but it's got that kind of rough and, and grungy bass line in it, and that's what we're looking for. I'll just draw in a new MIDI clip. And then I'll change my grid to 16th notes and apply my groove. For this groove, I'm using Notator 16D. I like this groove. It doesn't mess around with the velocity. So when you turn this groove on, it does just move the second and the fourth 16th note in every beat. Um, and, it, and it doesn't change the velocity. Some of the grooves that you can find in the groove pools in Ableton change the velocity of the sound as well. We don't want that for the bass line. We want the bass to be consistent all the way through. I'm just going to show you the drums. I'm going to solo them on their own. Uh, I'll turn this bass off. So the main thing I'm looking for with the drums is that they are already really groovy. I want to get to a point where I can almost hum a bass line in my head without actually hearing a bass line yet. If the drums aren't groovy, then the bass is going to be a lot harder to write. It's much easier to write a bass line once the drums are grooving than it is if, say, I just had a kick in this project. With the kick as well, I want to make sure that it's punching through the mix. I want to be able to hear it. The kick needs to be the loudest part of the track. So I make sure that it's got a nice click on top it's also quite subby as well, the kick, and that will make the kick and bass relationship really nice. <laughs> Lastly on that, the hats are punching through too, and I've got this skippy percussion, so if you want to see how I made the drums, just drop me a comment below and I'll make a video on that. Moving back into the bass line, let me just turn that channel on, moving into the bass line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find a nice octave first. A bit loud so I'm just gonna lower that down I'm just going to so there that's a nice key so what we're in C we're in the key C so I don't get too caught up on keys and scales and chords or anything like that. With the bass lines, all I care about, if it sounds right, it is right. I make music for people to dance on the dance floor. That's what I care about. And no one's stood on the dance floor wondering what key my bass line's in. So I don't get too caught up. It's probably best practice to maybe learn some scales and things. But your ears are the best tool. Just use your ears for this. Don't get too caught up on it. So as you can see here, let me zoom into this first bar. As you can see here, I've made the 16th notes. They're quite close together. And here, because they are so close together, I'm probably thinking in the next bar that we probably need to have some gaps. Not only the keys when they're bouncing up and down the scale like this give the bass line groove, but also if I were to leave some gaps in the bass line, it also has groove. You can see this in the first beat here. The kick hits here, then there's a large gap, and then the bass note comes in. Um, and this last note, because of the groove that we've put on, is swung as well. And that's what's making that first bit really groovy. So let's play again. 
Now there's no science to where I'm placing these notes, I'm just going with my ear as I said, so I can hear that out, so I'll just bring it down. And again, I probably need to leave a gap here to add groove. So as you saw there, it's just trial and error. Just place your bass note on the grid and then move it around until you get something nice. And another way to add groove into this is to have some notes that are 16th notes and drag some out so they're 8th notes as well like this. So. do for me for now so I'm not getting too caught up I'm not messing around and leaving it there for, for ages and, and, and contemplating whether it's right or wrong I just get on with it otherwise I'm gonna get bored of, of what I'm already writing so now we're coming into the second bar I'm looking back to this first bar and I'm looking to see where I can add variations so let me just copy that over some people will write bass lines with just one bar now for me it just gets a bit too repetitive and boring if I were to loop over these two bars now and play it for me maybe with some tech house tracks this might work but for me it's just a bit too boring let me play it now it would just get too repetitive so let's move over into this bar and give some variation What I'm going to do is just remove this one. As I said, some gaps in the bass line give it groove. So I'm going to let the bass breathe here in the club as well. The subs will reset and the next note that comes in will be really impactful. So. I'm extend out my loop now up to four bars and I carry on drawing. So again, coming into the third bar now, I'm looking back at the second and just seeing where can I add some variation. And I just want to place a note on the end to roll it into the next bar. And we go again. Now it's like a mirror image. So the third and the fourth bar, I'm looking like a mirror image to the first and second. But again, I want to add variation. So I'm just going to highlight everything I've done so far and command D on the keyboard. Just to duplicate it across. And I'm going to listen to it and just see where can I start adding or removing some notes to keep the bass line varied. So here I can kind of feel that there should be some kind of difference there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a 16th note so it's mirroring here. And then I'm going to place a note before it, but I'm going to go up an octave. In fact, I'm going to do this, this last 16th note so it's swung. Go up an octave. Sometimes going up just an octave like this on just one or two notes can add a real nice feel for the bass. So let's let's see what happens there. I'll just play it from the third bar. And that might be it for the variation. As I say, I'm not getting too caught up. I'm just moving on quite quickly. So I can see that the velocity on some of the notes are a bit different. We want all the velocities to be the same. So highlight everything, bring it all the way to the top so it flattens all the velocities. And then I bring them down. Actually, I would sometimes add a lot more variation in these third and fourth bars to keep it interesting if it was really repetitive, but because we're bouncing over two octaves, you see we're in this octave, then we go up into the, the one above. Because we're bouncing over two octaves, we're, it keeps it really interesting anyway, so I'm not having to add too much variation. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to dial back the envelope, just because it's a bit too punchy for me. Um, it's got too much of that donk sound on the front, so I'm just going to bring that down slightly. And that works for me. So I'm just going to try it now. I've got an auto filter on the master channel and I've mapped that to my 
number one on the keyboard. So I've key mapped it to number one on the keyboard. If I press that, the auto filter comes on and I can drop the bass in by pressing number one. Also, one of the open hats I've also mapped so that when the auto filter's on, the open hat's off. And when the auto filter's off, the open hat's on. It would just give me, show me how impactful this chat's going to be, really. So I'm just going to play it through, and then I'll drop the bass after after four bars, and we get a sense of how, how the bass line's sounding. 